Welcome to Modern Art Blitz, an hour of blitzing the latest <laughs> trends and uh, what else? The latest trends in contemporary art? I wanted to say something Trends and friends. Trends and friends. Ooh, I like that. Trend. I'm going to blitz the trends and friends. Exactly. My name is Matt Gleason. I am your host. I do this blitzing alongside my co-host. Des. Lisa Derrick. The legendary Lisa Derrick. <laughs> now you're going to make me blush. When people guest on this show, it might get us, the interview might get sketchy, <laughs> but we have a, somebody in the sketcher's seat. We have intern Aliza in the sketcher's seat, and she sketches. Wait, wave to the camera, intern Aliza. <laughs> you can uh, wave with that middle finger if you you've want. You've got, <laughs> got a little attitude today. Let's hear about the attitude. Did you have a long day today? I don't you, have a mic. you don't have a mic, so it means you're not talking to me. But I did have a long day. Today. Yeah, she had a long day today. So um, she's going to be sketching our guests later in the show. We're going to have Ray Beldner of the Startup Art Fair, and a great San Francisco-based artist in his own right. All right, maybe I'll say Bay Area because once you move out of the city of San Francisco, it's like your rent goes down like ninety percent. So I just, you know, don't want to. We'll, we'll we'll find out later. But our first guests founded the city of Inglewood's. Open Studio Tour. It is a leading tour to get to know some of the best, brightest, and boldest. Oh, see, I'm doing it with the the alliteration. alliteration. Bam, I like bam. that. All right, man. Very good. It's all improv here, by the way. So, um, may I introduce Please. artists and I want to say entrepreneurs, but more like like civic Visionary. pride visionaries. That was good. Thanks for the thanks oh, for so the improv. Uh, <laughs> you should just kind of put that on the burner, and I grabbed it and ate the sandwich. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Renee Fox and Kenneth Ober. Oh, and I remembered your names too, so hey, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good start. I've only, and I've only known you guys like, what, six years, so. <laughs> okay, so hey, tell us about the Inglewood Open Studio Tours. You want to start? <laughs> sure. Uh, so Inglewood Open Studios is, um, it's a grassroots artist run event. Um, that we started just between friends as a way to see other artists work and share collectors and visitors um, share our work, you know, with different people who we'd have to our own studios. And these were people who just lived on the block, like le next door to us or, or down the street. Um, and that was 2005, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, at that point, we had just moved to Inglewood, so we didn't know a lot of people. Um, and each, each year, you know, we started doing this uh, annually. We did it twice in one year. Um, and each year it, it kind of grew um, where people started learning about it and we started meeting more people and as uh, I guess a <laughs> um, any kind of community event uh, like that um, it becomes a big party yeah yeah it becomes it a big party every everyone everyone wants to be a part of it um, Inglewood Public Television showed up to interview all the artists yeah. Wow that's pretty amazing. That's like the drone box of Inglewood. It is, exactly. It is? Okay. So, so um, and what year was this? Uh, that the... That, that you started, that you had your first like, get-together. 2005? Yes, yes. 2005, so that's like 11, 11 years. years. This is going to be the 11th? When's it coming up? Well, the let's... official was, 20, it was 2006. Yeah. And, and so this is the 10-year 10 10-year ten year official. Ten year. And, when, and when is it? Next weekend. Now, this weekend. What is the, the date? What are the dates? The physical date. It's November 12th and 13th, Saturday November and Sunday. 12th and 13th. Yeah, uh, 12 until 5 each day. We, we could archive this on YouTube. Somebody could be watching this 50 years from now, and Ingle. they might walk on down to Inglewood, and who knows where Inglewood will be in 50 years. Yeah. It'll be a it's, big stadium there. You got, okay, so you've been there. You guys have been there a while. What's changed in the 10 years? You've been, how long have you been in Inglewood? Uh, 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. 11 years. What's changed? Uh, so much. I'm, I mean, the artist community then was sort of these pockets of people who had been there a very long time, and they um, they knew one another, but it was pretty quiet. Um, 
everyone was hiding out in warehouses and yeah. commercial spaces, didn't want to be noticed by the government, the city of Inglewood. <laughs> What's everybody else? these days? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's confined to two artists in a warehouse in Inglewood. Help me out here. <laughs> no, that's a good point because, uh, you know, eventually um, the city caught on to what was going on with the tour because they, you know, it was good news for the city. and. Um, that is what really made it a much bigger event than what we ever imagined. It was, you know, a way of sort of sharing, you know, amongst a community of artists. Um, and then it became a much, a much bigger deal, something a lot more public. So. Now, Inglewood's been associated with uh, the inner city and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, negative associations among the bourgeois of the San Fernando Valley, for example. So, uh, yeah, and yet it's, it's uh, not a bad place to live. Uh, no, it's it's been really good. Um, it's, it's got awesome weather. Yeah, the weather, <laughs> weather's great, um, and it feels like a small community. You've got you know neighborhoods that have a lot of pride in one another, and they'll make sure that you know they keep the streets clean and take care of their yards. And um, do you know your neighbors? Uh, I do. Kenneth. Yeah. Yeah. Do they know you? They do. They do. So, so, and you're both working artists. Yes. How many artists are in Inglewood, roughly? How many? How many on the on, on the Ingle, what's it, the Inglewood Open Studios Art Walk? Correct. What do you call it? The Inglewood Open Studios. I O S. Mm -hmm. Yes. The exactly. I O S. Kind of like a government agency. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, how many artists could one encounter if one were to encounter every artist on the Inglewood Open Studios? How many artists would they encounter? Well, this year is about 64. 64 wow. hours. And is it a walking tour or a driving tour or a combo? Combo. It's a combo. There's different stops that you can drive to and then you can walk from those stops. Shuttle buses? There are, yeah. The city actually helps sponsor the tour. Wow. And they provide shuttles. I, I took the shuttle one a couple years ago and I really enjoyed it and I felt like it was kind of indicative of where things are going as far as like artists, they have to take a role in their communities now. It's mm -hmm. almost like you can't. You can't be hidden anymore. Sure. You can't afford to be hidden, right? Well, it's good publicity for us. Essentially, now we've become associated with the city of Inglewood. It's led to a lot of different kinds of publicity outlets that have brought a lot more attention to us and our work and our community. So the big question, has it led to sales? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. So, sure. so, so you're getting the word out outside of the city of Inglewood. So there's, um, are people coming from you know, Beverly Hills and good neighborhoods that want to uh, invest in art or buy art or Everywhere, as far as Pasadena, art. Malibu. Okay, so, so the buyers are coming, the collectors are coming. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And um, has it raised your profile as art? I mean, you're both, you know, well-known showing artists. I mean, it, has it raised your profile at all? Yeah, for sure. Um, art consultants come as well. Uh, we've, I, I've gotten shows out of it and sold work, I think both of us. Oh yeah, I've yeah. met some dealers, some interior designers and other people like that that have led to sales and gotten me more connections. It's, it's been very good in a lot of ways. Now, is Inglewood a desirable place for artists to live in addition to the community? Is it, is it, obviously, it's, it's probably less expensive than a lot of places in Southern California. Absolutely. Is that still the trend or are the, are the rents going up there? Have you noticed a, things getting um, more expensive or more, is, is the quality of life better? I mean, what's happening? Rents are going up, definitely, especially commercial spaces. Especially commercial spaces. That's, that's been the first real turnover as, I think the, the news of the uh, St. Louis Rams relocating to Los Angeles really brought a lot of attention to Inglewood uh. in general. And it brought a lot of people who were thinking about buying something, oh, we should buy there. That's a hot spot. In five, ten years, the value is going to increase dramatically. But I want to also add to that that you know, being artists in the city and becoming more um, obvious and more participatory. You know, as a part of the Open Studios, we've gone to the city hall and helped to speak to them about sponsorship and what we're doing there. You know, having permits and such. And and as such, we're functioning as a business. Um, and you know, the city has been cooperative in, in the ways that they can um, so far as helping to establish um, legal live work situations within the city. Um, so I think that in that sense it's it's a nice place for artists and they you know they seem to really um, at least so far really want to have the artists. Because a lot of cities it's, it's an adversarial relationship you know I mean there's there's some cities yeah. that do fire inspections in their commercial and industrial spaces to make sure nobody's living there especially artists you know. So the fact that you know, Inglewood has kind of embraced this, like, oh, well, they're here, we may as well work with them. 
for now. Well, yeah. Artists had been in, in some of the spaces, artists have been there for 30 years. Who is there, is it known in the lore of Inglewood who the first artist in a commercial space there was? Oh gosh, well, Steve Hurd. Oh, Steve Gina Heard. Lamb. Steve I've been Heard. there a long Steve time. Steve Hurd told me a story about having to form a convoy to, to, to leave his studio in Inglewood during the LA riots. And oh, that was wow. 1992. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah that's yeah. Phenomenal. Jack Brogan. Jack Brogan. He's oh, been wow. down there. He's not technically in Inglewood, he's across one street. Oh, yeah? What's, what I city think. is that? LA. Unincorporated so LA County or the city of LA? It's at West, so he's on one side of West. I guess it's the city of LA. It's the city of LA, okay. Wow. So you now you're both artists, and I want to look at behind as you've been talking about the Inglewood Open Studios. We've been looking at your art. So um, who's whose art is oh, that, this? That's mine. And, and uh, what what is is this a drawing? It's actually a mural. It's 18 feet by 18 feet. Wow. Ooh, boy. Uh, and it, it's called the Bee Eaters. Um, these are different pairings of birds that are flying around above this sort of springtime explosion of, of life. Um, and it's different parts of plants that I sort of collage together to create that you know, orchid with roots. But you're actually looking at the installation of it. It was in an exhibition at Otis College of Art and Design um, called uh, Freeway Studies. Um, okay, so the floor, the floor down here, this is actually the floor at, at the Otis Gallery. Yeah, yeah, oh, the okay. concrete. Oh, that's the concrete. <laughs> Your feet okay. are on it. <laughs> yeah, there we are. And then, and then uh, above that is, okay, now, and that plant doesn't really exist in nature optically relative to it's more like no. an, from your imagination based it's on, amalgamation of different okay. great plants, great great yeah. and, a, and a couple different types of birds yeah and yeah. so you are a muralist yes is it primarily you do other art too though i do other art too um i started making work i mean i've always drawn uh but you know at the corcoran in Gosh, Corcoran of Art and Design in D.C., I think it was 1996. You um, studied there? I started, yeah. And I studied tr uh, traditional botanical drawing, so really detailed, kind of fine. Uh, oh, wow. Old school. Yeah, old school. Like, I love, I love the those. traditional. Are, are, there so a, are there a lot of jobs yeah, in the classifieds for that type of uh, art? You know, it's funny. I thought, like, doing that, that I'd end up doing medical illustration or something that was yeah. highly technical, but I didn't go into that. Instead, um, the, ex the, the schools that I was in really pushed me toward, you know, more modern art theory and kind of discussing how art, you know, art could be even integrated into daily life. And that was more interesting to me. So I think that murals really came about to make the work more obvious and something that people can interact with more. Um, but I've also had a decorative painting background for many years, ever since I started school. So those techniques come into my art practice too. Wow. So now, how do you... How do you sell a mural on the Inglewood Open Studios? Do you have a mural in your studio, on the wall of your, at the outside, the inside? It's funny that, that, so perfect timing for that question because the mural that's in this image, um, these birds are in my house. Uh, that mural, I, the, the local LA muralist, uh, Kent Twitchell, um, uses this material that's actually removable for his Oh wait, murals. so this was a mural painted on a wall, but it was actually painted on a removable material. It's a fabric that when you paint it, it's kind of like wallpaper and it's removable by carefully peeling oh, okay. it off. Yeah. <laughs> and probably tried a that with certain amount of times, yeah. 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 <laughs> no. Um, but the birds are reinstalled in, in my house, um, you know, but mostly these are custom site-specific projects. Okay. And, and uh, where else have you painted murals? Uh, West LA College. I did a large piece that was 60 feet wide by 15 feet tall. Oh, man. Yeah. And um, there's another one that's in the permanent collection at the um, Lancaster Museum of Art and History. They okay. have one. Um, and then I've done... Oh, you, you, you at your gallery, I had one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, 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 the window outside, okay. So, and now we're looking at one of Kenneth's artworks. This is a painting, correct? Yes, oil on canvas. Oil on canvas? How, how big is Beautiful. it? Beautiful. Yeah, this one's actually really about nice. 13 inches square. Okay, and what is the, and is it just paint? It's paint, but I don't use brushes. I actually work with special tools designed for pinstriping cars. It allows me to create very fine and precise lines of any length. Wow. And, and, and so, so what do we look at? Is it like a sunburst? Sure, it's like a mandala. I, I've been interested in mandalas ever since reading Carl Jung's work where he was using it as therapy to help his patients. And I thought, well, I need therapy. Let me try some mandalas. <laughs> Does it work? Oh, absolutely. Really? I feel better than ever. Highly recommend Very it. Very therapeutic. <laughs> and so, so um, now when you're, you're using this tool that does pinstriping for cars, so you're, you're basically getting like a, a, a bunch of thin lines here. 
Correct. Do you have do you have a particular is there is there an artist that was an influence in this? I mean, I'm, I'm, I think of the pinstriper von Dutch, but I'm is there a painter out there that that you're that you're nobody uh, paints with this tool, but George Seurat is probably the closest to a lot of my current kind of work, where he used lots of dots, and what he was really exploring was called divisionism, the use of multiple colors to create enhanced luminosity on the surface. And so I'm very interested in that. And so this particular painting is not a landscape, but I make a lot of more landscapey kind of pieces that are they're sort of abstract landscapes. But I'm very interested in the luminosity and the sort of sense that the canvas is lit from within. It's glowing. Wow. So describe, uh, can it describe your alpha collector? Who you've 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 uh, exhibited for years, sold a lot of art over the years, um, well known. Who is your alpha collector? What is like when somebody when somebody comes and looks at your art? How do you know? It's like oh, I know this. This is like the, the kind of person who buys my art. Well, I, I'm I'm uh, very diverse. My my paintings tend to be diverse. So I say you know some landscapes and things. And, and when I'm often exhibiting, there are a number of different styles of what I'm doing. But everything's made with these tiny lines. And uh, so I find that my primary buyers are intelligent. That, that, that diversity appeals to them. It's not just the aesthetic, it's, it's part of what mentally happens when they're having the optical experience. Okay. Uh, I make a lot of big pieces, pieces that are six feet and, and larger, six foot by eight foot, and uh, so they're expensive. And so obviously it's a moneyed person who's, who's willing to invest. And somebody who has a house with a wall that big. Yes. You know, yes. You're not talking about people living in their RVs buying this art. Okay? No, not really. <laughs> so, so now, this is not a mural that we're looking at, but it is a painting by Renee Fox. Renee, did you just, you just told us you were a muralist, and now I'm going <laughs> to bust you because these aren't murals. What, what's going on here? These are uh, an ongoing uh, series called Bad Seeds. And they're either two by three or three by three inches each. Um, so they're very tiny, intimate pieces, and they're a return to that really intimate uh, practice of botanical drawing. But they're drawings of these highly, well, I mean, they really are very realistic. They're, they're pretty true to what the seeds are, but they're somewhat sexualized in the way that I'm drawing them. There's uh, like grape seeds and um, all sorts of fruit seeds and magnolia. So when you sexualize a seed, mm -hmm. is that a fetish of yours? <laughs> well, Renee's uh, art no. is really sexy. I've, your flowers, your shapes, the whole, but it's not egregiously, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. there's such a delicate eroticism mm -hmm. that um, is, it's really engaging and charming without being saccharine and coy. So, so are you, why are you making, are these life size of the same size as the seeds? Are you going for this small thing? For, no, they're, they're definitely enlarged. Like the seeds are very tiny. Very tiny. Yeah. So you enlarge them and yet it's not a mural. Uh, no, but the way these are in, installed, they can take up an entire wall. But you know, I do work that's not murals. So. What's, what's the price difference between a three inch and a two inch painting? <laughs> they're the same. <laughs> so you could actually... If, you can uh, get a deal if you buy yeah. the three-inch. I, you know, you I try to sell a six-foot painting, and I try to sell wow. a five-foot painting. There's, there's, a, there's, a big, there's, a wow. big, uh, there's a big change there. Yeah. So, Check <laughs> this okay. out. So we're on a, it's, like, it's like we're on a landscape here with, with oh, a nice, nice. Uh, nice tile floor. But, um, so, so uh, Kenneth, this is a landscape of yours? Yes. Yes, this is actually my most recent finished piece. Wow. And it took the shortest amount of time and sold the fastest of any painting I've ever made. Nice. There's like, there's like a fractional expression of that, you know, like, yeah. like three, three months work over like $5,000, $15,000, like, like, and then yes. there's a formula there. Yeah, you know, yeah. like X equals Y kind of thing. This is the top of that formula. This is the, the top of the pyramid. <laughs> yes. It took the shortest amount of time. It's sold for the biggest. Now, why did it, have you perfected a technique that, that is allowing you to work quicker? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Uh, I was just under pressure. I, I, I did a bunch of shows in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my galleries in Colorado kept a lot of my work. And oh. so when I came back, I had very little to show uh, for my most recent show. So I was hustling, 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 and I had these kind of ideas. And uh, with this particular piece, you really get a sense of sort of mist in the valleys of rolling hills going off into the distance. And oh, yeah. Very I, I much was so. definitely trying mm -hmm. to get that. And it, it happened in this painting sort of the most. And I've been doing a bunch of pieces where I'm exploring it, but this one is sort of the best example of that kind of thing. 
okay, wow, because I'm, I'm looking at it, it, it has such natural elements, and yet it's a complete homage to abstraction. Yes, so, absolutely. And especially when you look, you know, I've seen your work up close. I mean, sometimes yeah. it's, 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 it is really all about... It's, it's the, tiny marks, a sixteenth by a sixteenth, yeah. you know, a sixteenth by an eighth. And you don't own a paintbrush. I own them. I just don't oh, use them. They collect think, dust. I, nah, I'm thinking you gotta, you know, let's go for some purity here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> okay. Now this is not okay. This is not a mural. No, it's not. <laughs> this is, not, and, and I'm assuming this one is a little bigger than three inches. Yeah, this is uh, four by four feet. Four by four feet. Oh wow. Okay, and this is—is is this more drawing or painting? It's both. Um, it's a. a blended background like an ombre of color and then um so the background is oil paint mm -hmm. um and those circular shapes you see are the color the blend of the colors with a brush kind of like bringing the pigment up into the white color um and then those two seed pods you see floating are um colored pencil now have you ever had a, a situation at the inglewood open studio where somebody comes into your studio a couple hours after being at kenneth's down the street or or you're you're like across town, or and they're like oh, around the corner. Okay, well they, they and it's like oh, I like this, but I, I already bought a n more natural painting. Is that is that, have you ever? It went the opposite. It way. went the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yes, like, yes. They came in well, your studio after buying one of hers. Going, no, they oh. went to her studio and saw a piece of mine. Oh, and yeah, then yeah. came to my studio and commissioned me to make a large piece. Oh, awesome! Oh, oh. Did you get? Did you? I hope you got like Here's, a little taste come on, there. Look at me, come on, you know, hey, if you were an art dealer, you could have taken. 50 yeah, percent. you should have gotten at least <laughs> like a, a good meal out of that. That's a, right, right. Some real pros here. So, uh, and, and 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 maybe you said it, and I'm overlooking. What kind of paint? What kind of your, what kind of paint is your favorite paint to use? Uh, oil. oil acrylic, I, I love painting in oil. You love painting in yeah. oil. And now, with your with your special magic tool, pinstriping oil. tool, it, oil paint works the best yes. in that. Now, yeah, what about the pin? The pinstripers don't use oil. The, well, pinstripers use an oil-based enamel. An oil oh, okay. so it's, it's one shot, something like okay. that. It's more like a house paint. Okay. And so I went to Artist Oils because they have a better color palette, ah, and okay. I can intermix, and with the right mediums, I can get them to you be get the same proper viscosity. viscosity. And, wow. Okay. So now, um, have you ever, has anybody ever tried to like say, hey, sell me your formula here, that, that sort of thing? No, but I'm constantly berated for telling people how I make my paintings. Oh, really? By like other artists who want to hide their technique? Don't tell people how you do this. this. As soon as you tell people, it cheapens it. And I'm like, really? no, no, that's everyone's first question. What am I looking at? How did you do this? I don't understand. Interesting. And you, don't, you, you never decided at one point to say, well, I'm magic. Well, I bring the tool with me, uh -huh. and once I forgot the tool. So I decided I wasn't going to talk about the tool the whole time. Yeah. Everybody wanted to know how I made the painting. Interesting. That was, if it wasn't the first question, it was the second question. Wow. But how did you do that? That's not a brush, is it? Now, how, you know, the, the, the etymology of how is basically it's, it's an engineering question. You know, do you look at art? I mean, engineering takes intellect and skill, but a lot of artists want to, like, de-skill art and, and take it out of that realm. I mean, do you consider yourself at some point some kind of architect or, of the picture or an engineer of the picture? Oftentimes, ah, uh, the, the challenge of deciding what colors to use in the back so that the kind of luminosity I'm hoping to achieve will actually happen at the beginning. So in the first 10 hours of the painting, I could kind of almost use any colors, but the next 20 to 30 hours, it becomes really important which colors I'm using. All the color relationships are so specific that if, if, if I don't get specific, if I'm not kind of architectural about it, the, it could get muddy and, and not work out, which in, in my opinion, most artists fail in their use of color relationships. Wow, yep. Some artists, uh, some artists, I think are colorblind and are still using color. It's yes. Like, uh, <laughs> but, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, whoa. This is whoa. West LA College, correct? Yep. Okay, because I saw this in person a couple of years ago. So and, sexy. Um, oh. Nice floor there, the great reflection. Isn't that great? And how tall and wide wow. is this mural? So this is the one that's 60 feet wide and 15 feet tall. 15 feet tall. And it's on a slightly curved wall, but mm -hmm. I had a, a really great photographer who helped to 
Photoshop that image to wow. fly on the board. Now, <laughs> may, I, may I ask, is it freehand? Are you using some kind of projector? Do you start with your um, own imagery? No then? projector because that space was so big and bright. It had so many windows and they were really tall, so I couldn't really cover there it There was all. no way to project light because it was too there much There was light. no way. And I also really like these tra traditional um, techniques like gridding out the drawing and making it big. So I had um, a drawing on paper that was, um, God, I think it might have been 30 inches wide. And that maybe decided the proportion of the squares. So on the drawing themselves, they ended up being about, you know, maybe two inches or something. Um, and on the wall, I made pins at each mark. At each, not each two inch mark, right? No, like but like two. whatever, it was three feet or wow. whatever. Yeah, and then um, put string in between them. Okay. And uh, drew, you know, from the, the drawing, enlarging it into the bigger space. Um, which was tricky, but I, I love the idea too. The work does talk about beauty in, in the modern fine art context and um, uses these tropes of what beauty is like um, symmetry or flowers or femininity. And um, so me making it symmetrical, but make, that also, also knowing that it was imperfect in that was also really nice. Nice. Okay, Beautiful. one last question. Kenneth Ober, Renee Fox, the Inglewood Open Studios is November 12th and 13th, yeah. 2016. Where's the best place to park? Residency Gallery on Queen Street. There's a whole bunch of parking garages all around yeah. there, and there's street parking, metered street parking, and you can catch the shuttle bus there. You can get the map there. That's, that's stop number one. Stop number one. But I have a question. What about food trucks and places to eat while I'm on the tour? Because God knows I love my food. <sighs> I don't think there are any food trucks this year, but there are some amazing eateries in Inglewood. There's one um, right around the corner from residency called Stuff I Eat. Okay. And they're, Best in Inglewood. It's amazing. It's um, really nice, healthy, fresh, vegan, uh, but you don't miss the What's meat. What's the cheesecake place? Harriet's Cheesecake oh on Centinella. Oh. Oh. <laughs> cheesecake is good for you because it's like a protein. You know what? Cheesecake is good for you because exactly. you buy about eight pieces of it and you just get into a coma. <laughs> it's the best. Oh. But there's so much good food even right next to there is Philip's Barbecue. Oh, great barbecue. Oh, oh, great. You can't okay. go wrong in Inglewood. Yeah, I might make it to the art. If you reminded me now, I'm going to go for the food. Oh, yeah, okay. I think okay. I'll join you on that one. So, um, Renee Fox, Kenneth Ober, thank, thank you for joining you. us oh, wait, on. Wait, thank you. We have oh, so the sketch, we the sketch. sketch. Oh, here we go. This Let's is ah. straight from the sketcher's seat. Can we get a, can we get a close up here? Oh, that's of, so great. Of Kenneth Ober. It really is like a oh, can, we get, here, can we get here? I know, right? <laughs> oh, can we get that two here. shot? Oh, there we go. go. We go. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. Five minutes rendered impeccably by intern Elisa nice in the sketcher's seat. Okay. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.